Travel Squad podcast. We're four friends that grew up together in the same small town. We followed each other to San Diego, and now we adventure the world together. One passport stamp at a time. We're here to share our travel stories and inspire you to go on your own adventures. Even if it starts with your own backyard. I'm Jamal. Brittany. Kim. And I'm Dana. And And we're we're the the Travel Travel Squad Squad podcast. podcast. So grab your ticket, your passport, and don't forget your travel insurance. And prepare for takeoff. Hello, fellow travelers. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 58 of the Travel Squad podcast. Today, we are taking you to a city close to our hometown, the beautiful capital of California, Sacramento. Ooh, Sac Town. I have so many good memories of living in Sac. I lived in Midtown. I went to college in Sacramento. I have many memories living it up on the American River and the Sacramento River. And I'm so excited for this episode today. I'm so excited for this episode too. And Sac will always have a special place in my heart. And I loved that Sac is so central. You can be to San Francisco or up in the mountains within an hour and a half from Sacramento. Yes. As Jamal said, Sacramento is our state capital here in California. Most people do not realize that. A lot of times it's overshadowed with people thinking that Los Angeles or San Francisco, one of the bigger cities like that is our state capital. But no, it is Sacramento up in NorCal. And not only is it close to our hometown, it is very close to our hearts. Sacramento does have a lot to offer. So we want to give you guys the lowdown on our second hometown, pretty much our first one being Woodland, second one Sac, now third San Diego, but this one is all about Sac. But one thing I want to say before we get into it, Kim, you mentioned you graduated from school up there. California State University, Sacramento. Do you know who is also part of your alumni up there? Mm. Tom Hanks, Mr. Hollywood, Sac State alumni. Check it out. Look at you. Yeah, definitely have some Hanks vibes up there. He's up there. (laughs) (laughs) The other thing about Sac is that Tom Hanks loves it. And it also is really hot in the summer, like very hot. It could be 114 degrees some days in the summer with no breeze. So I would recommend if you're planning to visit, maybe doing so in the spring or the fall or early summer, like, I don't know, May or June before it gets super, super hot. In the fall, it's actually really pretty. It's one of my favorite times in Sacramento because there's so many trees. The city's deemed the city of trees. So there's just big, beautiful trees lining all of the streets in these really pretty neighborhoods and they all turn colors. So you really get the fall vibe there. Definitely really nice in the fall. So let's get right into the episode. Let's talk about the different parts of Sacramento. And let's go over Midtown first. Kim, Midtown was your old stomping ground. So why don't we get into Midtown Mm. first? Midtown is probably my favorite neighborhood in Sacramento because it's the funnest and it's the coolest, obviously. It's a party neighborhood. I lived there, so of course it's going to be cool. They have like a Kim Deese plaque somewhere up there, if I'm not mistaken, right? Famous, yep. (laughs) They just roll out the red carpet. You were like the Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton of the day out there. (laughs) Just was like, oh, Kim's out. Let's go. Oh, yeah. This is exactly how it was. (laughs) Totally. Sacramento is kind of set up where it's Old Town, Downtown, and then Midtown. Then you kind of get into East Sac and the different suburbs. So Midtown is this quaint area of Sacramento. I love that the streets are really easy to navigate because they're all numbers one way and letters the other way. So you're on 5th and J or 14th and K, and it's really easy to get around. And then all of the houses there are super historic homes from like the 20s or the 30s. So they're really, really pretty. They have a lot of character. It's not like this cookie cutter suburb kind of neighborhood. It's It's got a lot of personality. And Midtown, I would describe it as being kind of a hipster neighborhood. Very artsy, has a lot of cool bars, a lot of dive bars. And then again, these like historic homes have been turned into really cool bars. And I have plenty to recommend. What's your favorite cool bar that you've been to in Midtown? Easy. It's Flamingo Club. And it... <laughs> is that just because you love flamingos, Kim? Or is well, Flamingo I Club do, legit? I love flamingos, but it's not just because of that. It is one of those. It was a house, one of these historic homes they turned into a bar right on the main drag of K Street. And it's, it's really cool decorated. Like one of the bathrooms has bananas all over it, banana wallpaper. And then they have this backyard area or like back patio area where they have like 
just weird colors and like backdrops of like tinsel kind of things. Like it's decorated really cool. There's couches. It's loungy. Do they have any flamingo decorations? Tons of flamingo stuff. They usually have like a house DJ there. It's It's got a cool vibe. I've never been to the next place, but I wanted to know, do they have the thing with animals? Because I've heard of a place called Zebra Club in <laughs> Midtown. Yeah, they have one called Golden Bear too. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so I guess, yeah, they like their animals there. That's a good one. Cupro's is another one that I would totally recommend. It's a great place for brunch. It's also in one of these historic homes. It's a two-story place, but they have it set up super loungy. So I would always go there for football Sunday with a big group of people and do bottomless mimosas and they have good food and highly recommend that spot. So if you were visiting Sac, would you say Midtown's like a really good place to stay and visit? If you're cool and like want to go out and like have fun and, and have that kind of vibe, then I would definitely recommend Midtown. Yeah, Midtown's more the nightlife of Sacramento. I mean, it is close to downtown. Obviously, it's pretty much the same area, just a little bit Mm -hmm. segregated off there in a different section. But this is pretty much, like Kim said, where all the nightclubs are really going to be or bars. So everything pretty much nightlife-wise is going to be in that area. But you are right. That's one of my favorite things about Sacramento is you are in the downtown area you have the Capitol building, you have the skyscrapers, and then you go a few blocks and then it's the old homes, like you were saying, and the tree-lined streets. And you just really get this sense that, wow, like I'm in a downtown, but it doesn't have the, all those big, tall buildings. Like somehow mm-hmm. you're right by it, but not anywhere near it. It's just that weird type of feeling yes, that I really like about it. has really kept its like historic and, and old kind of like town vibes. I have a lot of other places I can recommend. I think I would be doing a disservice to our listeners if I didn't just give them all the good spots. Let's hear it. Okay, so Round Corner is another place. I used to live right around the corner from it. <laughs> Actually, it's a it's a very much divey kind of like biker bar, but really good Taco Tuesday. Highly recommend that. Love me a good um, taco. Like Brittany said, Zebra Club, that's a fun place. It it has a really big outdoor patio. It's also one of the few places that opens really early in the morning. So you can get early morning drinks if you're an early riser like that. Um, Ink is another place that's really good for brunch. They have an amazing, probably the best chicken fried steak I have ever had in my life. Cute decorations and bottomless mimosas that are very dangerous there. So watch out. The last two places I'll recommend are a little bit on the edge of Midtown. And that is... Chicago Fire, amazing pizza, wood-fired pizza place. And then right next to that is Bar West. Now, in SAG, when we lived there, we called it Bro West because there were quite a few bros that went there. They're broing it out. <laughs> broing it out it's at Bro West. It's pretty bro especially on a Sunday fun day. But the big draw of it is they have these really delicious punch bowls. Well, I mean, I guess with COVID, it could be a little different, but they used to have these punch bowls that were huge with like 20 straws and everyone at the table would share one and they were really fun. But that's a solid list of nightlife and brunch places. So if you are in SAC and in the Midtown area, you heard it here first. Squad tips from Kim specifically. These are the must-do bar dining locations in Midtown SAC. Another really cool thing about Midtown is every second Saturday of the month, they do a second Saturday art walk. So Midtown has a lot of art galleries and the bars will put up art as well. And then people mosey around, look at the art, have drinks, have food. It's a, and there's live music. They shut the streets down. It's a really lively night out. And once COVID settles down and, and they pick this back up, you should definitely try to time your trip so you can see it. One of my other favorite places in Sacramento is Old Sacramento, or simply Old Sac. And, you know, I guess it's a rite of passage living in the area. It's something that we've always done. Always have field trips that go to Old Sac. Did you ladies have field trips that went to Old Sac just as well? Right. So Old Sacramento is right along the Sacramento River. It is pretty much the old downtown of Sacramento of the 1800s. And what I really, really like about this is now, I mean, it is a historical area. They've turned it into a walking promenade area with lots of shops, but it is set up in a historical fashion. The buildings are all the old buildings from the 1800s. You're walking on sidewalks that are made out of wood and plank platforms, like you're really in the Old West. So it really gives you that vibe, truly, of what old Sacramento looked like. I have a specific memory where I went to go out with some girlfriends and we went to a comedy club 
club out in Old Sack. And like Jamal said, it is Western theme and we all wore high heels and walking on those wooden planks, our heels kept getting stuck between the planks and we'd have to like pull our foot out. And I, I'm pretty sure I probably fell and ate shit too. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're wearing heels and dressed up nice, do watch out. Your heel will fall between the wood planks if you're not careful. But again, it does really have that old vibe to it and makes it really fun just to see the old buildings that way. In fact, once a year they do a gold rush kind of themed event where they have people dressed like the old timers. They put a bunch of like wood chips in the road and shut the streets down so cars can't drive in it. And they do like old Western shootouts and like have the ladies in the <laughs> pretty dresses and it's it's a sight to see. And I think there's also an area for kids to like pan for gold as well, which is something I did as a kid. Let's get it. Yeah, you have all that stuff because a lot of people don't <laughs> really realize the history that Sacramento has. You know, one of the big Californian cities obviously was San Francisco. Sacramento is east of San Francisco. And then you have the Sierra Nevada mountains and the foothills, which is where they found gold and had the gold rush. So Sacramento was really that one spot somewhere in between the big city, getting the supplies in San Francisco, making your way to the mountains to try to find gold. So when we see the panning for gold, those old timer gunslinging shows that Kim's talking about, it really pays homage to Sacramento's history in terms of California gold rush and the whole history of California as a whole, pretty much. But beyond just the old buildings to see there are other things to actually do down there one of the most famous things to do in old sacramento is visit the railroad museum all aboard <laughs> toot, toot. i love that you're getting in the spirit of things anna because the railroad museum is actually there for a purpose in old sacramento not a lot of people know that sacramento was one of the terminuses of the transcontinental railroad the first railroad to actually go all all the way from the east coast of the united states to the west coast so this is an old locomotive railroad museum and again that really showcases california's history let alone sacramento's specifically in the development of the western united states oh i know it because you and i went to the same elementary school so when you hit fourth grade you got to go on a field trip to the <laughs> california state railroad museum and you got to go oh all aboard the choo-choo train. You know it, dude. But beyond Zana's playful banter, I mean, it really is actually fun to go in there. Really informative. So do check it out when you're an old sack. The other thing you have to check out when you're in Old Sack is the saltwater taffy. There's a store on, one, on the corner of one of the streets. They're always passing out a piece of paper that gets you a free sample when you go in. You get to pick it out yourself. And yes, they're wrapped. But you can't go to Old Sack without going into this taffy shop. Like, you cannot. <laughs> they have barrels and barrels of saltwater taffy. And they have so many different flavors. And different candies, too. Yeah, and so many different candies. And you have to go and check it out. It's so nostalgic for me. Yeah. And that's pretty much old sack. You go there, you kind of experience the old west, the wild, wild west, and then you get out and you move on to downtown, which is right outside of old sack. So the, walk right outside of those saloon doors and head into downtown. <laughs> That's right. And so Old Sack and downtown is divided by Interstate 5. But don't worry, you don't have to cross the freeway. There is a tunnel that goes from Old Sack to downtown under the freeway. And then right once you exit Old Town and you get into downtown, you're basically in the area where the King's Arena is. Golden One Arena, it's called. Golden One Arena, the and new arena. Since they built this arena, I moved out of SAC in 2014. I think it was finally opened in 2016 or 2015 maybe. What this arena has done for the downtown of SAC is amazing because when I lived there, there were a lot of abandoned buildings. A lot of the like nightlife didn't really exist. I think there was one club. It just, it was kind of losing its pizzazz. And then the outdoor shopping mall that they took down to build this arena was just completely deserted too. Like sad mall place to be. Now downtown is alive and popping. The whole area where it used to be, you're right, they demolished pretty much most of the outdoor mall that they had there, put in the arena. They kept some of the mall, and that whole area now is called Downtown Commons or Doco, whatever you want to call Ooh. it. But it really is that whole nightlife area of downtown walking promenade area just as well so there are shops there are bars you have the arena there so if you're going to catch a king's game it's great to do something there before or after or if you're going to go see a concert so do check out the downtown commons area it is really lively part of the downtown and from there you can move on to the beautiful state capital <laughs> 
I actually love the Capitol building in California. Did you ladies know it was designed to look like the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C.? It's a beautiful capital. I found out after you told me that, and my first <laughs> initial reaction was, no wonder it looks like Washington, D.C. Yeah, it was designed to look like the one in uh, Washington, D.C. They did a great job. So it makes it a little bit more extra special. It is really too. pretty. They have really nice manicured grass and rose bushes and tons of flowers, and it just looks pretty. And they do offer free guided tours, and it's a free museum as well. So if you guys do want to check it out, it is available. And fun fact, Sacramento used to flood so much that the Capitol building is actually built Built up and the bottom floors are made to flood so we can tolerate that well now it doesn't really flood so much but before they really built the levees i mean downtown sacramento is really at the confluence of two rivers the sacramento and the american so when we got those heavy rains and when it snowed and when that snow would melt definitely the area in sacramento would flood so it's designed to flood luckily it doesn't flood too much anymore you know they say if our levees ever give way that it would be as bad as it was in New Orleans. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Scary stuff. Well, and Kim, you mentioned earlier that the best times to visit are spring and fall because the summers are so hot. And I feel like the winters are very, very wet. I remember after getting my license when I was 16, you and I drove to Sac <laughs> <laughs> and we were driving down like a uh, old country road on like the outskirts of Sac and I came across like a whole bunch of water and I was like, what do I do? Do I go slow? Do oh, I go fast? Right. And we were like driving through these like floodplains. So one thing to note is if you are visiting in the winter, it can get very wet. It does rain a lot. It can actually be pretty cold too. Gloves, yes. beanie, jacket necessary. I used to sleep with a big red winter jacket on because it was so cold in my parents' house. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. extreme. It, it, well, I get cold very easily. But you know what? I remember when my my friend from Denmark, Martin, was visiting uh, Woodland, where we're from, and it was so cold. And we were outside on the front patio ha having a cigarette. He was. I don't smoke. But we were on the front porch having a cigarette, and it was raining really hard, and it was freezing. And I was wearing my puffy red jacket, and I was wrapping my arms around myself, and I was thinking to myself, my God, it's cold. And I look over at my friend Martin, who's in a t-shirt and shorts, and I'm like, aren't you cold? And he's like, oh, this weather is so beautiful. It reminds <laughs> me of Denmark mark in the summer and i'm like <laughs> in the fuck? summer <laughs> that, that's his uh let it all hang out type season right there for you <laughs> what does winter look like and let me tell you i've been there in winter and it's cold. And that's one of the things about Sacramento too. I mean, you really do have the four seasons minus the fact that it doesn't snow in Sacramento. I mean, very occasionally, I would say once every eight to 10 years, it will snow. If it snows, it really melts by afternoon. So it doesn't stay on the ground, but truly you do have the four seasons from winter, spring, summer, fall. And so I really do like that about it. So depending on when you go, do expect like dramatic season changes from one time to the next. Mm -hmm. And down town what i do want to throw out about it is it does have the club ace of spades it's a music venue and a lot of famous artists go and play there so i've even flown home before to see someone in concert and i remember the opening act was the band mainland and uh you know it's a small little venue so my two friends with me partied with them and it was funny because one of the guys is from san diego i had no idea mm -hmm. anyways i made the comment that i flew out from san diego to see them even though i didn't but i was really fucked up at that point so anyways i was like yeah well, i flew out of san diego to see you guys and he's like dude i'm from san diego i had no idea so i was like i know and he's like what and um he's like yeah from point loma and i was like i know i used to live on west point loma boulevard that's why i'm so excited i love you guys and he's like no way and then he like mentions other places there in point loma and i'm like i know and the entire time i'm just like i don't Way fucking to bullshit. know bullshit <laughs> yeah <laughs> I and then actually, we did drinks with them too. I actually have also partied with famous people that have played at Ace of Spades. Um, so I wasn't here for this one, but some of my friends did after party with um, the Expendables. Ooh, very nice. Went to another bar after the show. I wasn't there, unfortunately, but I did party with Revolution there. Ooh. Someone, a friend from Woodland, actually 
uh, works with them in some way. And so he got us backstage, got to hang out with them. Uh, one of my friends got burritos and like slept in their um, the tour van. Oh, that's cool. Tour yeah. bus. Tour bus. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's really cool. And I mean, it is a pretty small studio. So if John Mayer ever goes there, you know where I'm going to be. Yeah, Ace of Spades <laughs> is cool because you really do get a lot of big name acts in a small intimate venue. So mm -hmm. if you happen to be in SAC at the right time and find the right artist, do check out a performance there. It's definitely not to be missed. But before we move off of downtown SAC, can we really move on before we mention Tower Bridge? Oh, the famous Ooh, Tower Bridge. Tower Bridge. So Tower Bridge is an iconic staple of downtown Sacramento. It really straddles the Sacramento River going over into West Sacramento, and then it leads into the Capitol Mall, so the promenade that leads to the state capitol. I hate to compare it to the Golden Gate Bridge because it's nothing in terms of size of the Golden Gate Bridge or height, but it really looks like a miniature version of it to an extent that traverses the Sacramento River. It's a historical icon, focal point of the city, and it is a drawbridge in a sense because, you know, the Sacramento River flows all the way out to the ocean through San Francisco. So it is still a active bridge for a lot of the transportation because before, you know, modern California highways and everything, that was really the way to get stuff to the city the fastest. So there still is a lot of shipping on the Sacramento River. And if you're lucky, you can catch that bridge drawing up. It's really cool to see. Before we move out of downtown, I have to offer some recommended places. So so downtown, I would recommend staying at the Kimpton Hotel. It's a really nice hotel, kind of new near the Golden One Arena. They also have a rooftop bar. <laughs> That's your go-to, isn't uh, it? Yeah, it's a, it's a nice place. It's a little bit on the higher end of pricing, but it's totally worth it. Well, it's Saks Rooftop Bar. Uh, yeah, you gotta go. Punchbowl Social, they have one of those there with like VR rooms and a whole bunch of different games, bowling. It's really fun. There's also a place that opened after I moved out called the Champagne Bar. It has three different levels and tons of champagne, and it's downtown too. Do they have champagne sabrings? Mm, I, I cannot confirm. But I mean, they need to. But there's three different floors. And so they all have a different theme and they all have different music. So it's a really cool place. And then last but not least, I would recommend eating at Cafeteria 15L. Really, really good food. What kind of food? I would say it's like gourmet, like upscale American, maybe some pasta steaks kind of thing. Very nice. Hey, travelers. We want to stop for a quick minute to tell you about a really exciting product we put together just for you. As you all know, we love getting you excited to visit places for yourself by sharing what we did and making it easier by giving you squad tips that we learned along the way. The Travel Squad has created something to provide even more value for you in addition to our episodes by detailing trip itineraries and comprehensive multi-page guides with everything you need to know to do the trip right. These Itineraries include information on what to see and do in the area, where to stay, directions for the best routes, and even where to eat along the way. And we put them into these beautiful PDF guides just for you. We created itineraries for a week in Yellowstone and Grand Tetons, Big Island, Hawaii, and an itinerary for an American Southwest road trip and so many more itineraries to come. We are so excited to announce that they are now available to purchase on our website. So go over to travelsquadpodcast.com to get yours today. And moving on to East Sac, I am specifically excited about this one, not because I used to hang out in East Sac, but because our bachelor for a minute, Claire Crawley, is from Sacramento. And in Ooh. fact, she has her hair salon, De Facto Salon, in East Sac. Ooh. So thank you, Ms. Bachelor, representing Sacramento. Bachelorette. That's what I said. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> Bachelorette, for representing Sacramento. Well, I heard she's no longer the bachelorette, but that's a story for another time. We'll, we'll find out soon enough. Dun, 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 dun. But another unique feature about East Sac, other than the salon that Zaina just mentioned, <laughs> and our fellow bachelorette being from Sacramento, is Sutter Fort. Now, this goes back to what we were saying earlier about Sacramento's history and prominence regarding the gold rush. And so this is a historical landmark in California, and basically a Swiss immigrant 
named John Sutter, hence the name Sutter Fort, had a land grant from the Mexican government when Mexico was in control of California, and he used that land to build an agricultural establishment. And like I was saying earlier, this fort was used pretty much as a settlement spot for people as they were on their way to go mine and pan for gold in the Sierra Nevadas. So it has a lot of historical significance to Sacramento as pretty much the fort that everyone went to before they made their way to strike it rich, if you will. I can tell you this, though. I have never found gold in the Sierra Nevada mountains. I think they got it all back in 1849. <laughs> mm -mm, I'm sure there's a nugget out there waiting to be discovered. Man. I'm sure there is, but I haven't found it yet. Did you guys ever go to the historic days kind of events that they have at Sutter's Fort? I did not go to the one at Sutter Fort, but I went to the ones that they had in Coloma, which is where they found gold originally, which isn't too far from Sutter's mm -hmm. Fort, but I have not done the one at Sutter Fort. Oh, it's fun. People wear these old time outfits. You can churn your own butter. You can learn about life in those days. Who uh, doesn't want to make their own butter? <laughs> I when like you to churn butter. churn butter, do you get to wear like the old time outfit? I feel I have memories from my childhood of wearing an outfit. All right. Well, if we can find it, we'll put it on Instagram. Kim churning butter in the old timer <laughs> outfit. <laughs> can we bring our own truffle too and churn it? Truffle butter? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it would be delicious. Okay. You what, don't like truffles? Whatever you're into. I like truffles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think of what truffle butter would taste like. Oh. Deliciousness. <laughs> Um, Zaina, don't you have a friend that does trivia somewhere in Isak? Yes, I do. My best friend Josh does trivia every Tuesday night at 730 at Limelight. Of course, with COVID, it has been temporarily suspended. So he does it now online on Zoom. But past COVID, Limelight, East Sacramento, 730 Trivia with Josh. And we're not just repping this because Josh is our friend. Limelight is really a very famous spot in Sacramento just as well. So you should check it out if you're exploring nightlife out in East Sac. And then East Sac is kind of like the edge of the main areas of Sacramento. It is developing much more as the downtown and the midtown kind of spread that way. But then once you get out of East Sac, there's a lot of beautiful neighborhoods with beautiful trees. There's a neighborhood called the Fab 40s where they have these beautiful, gigantic homes that are just gorgeous with beautiful lawns and it's just house after house. And you basically have to be rolling in the dough to live there, but everyone loves those houses. They do the Christmas lights really good that time of year. And then as you keep driving, you get into more of the suburban parts of Sacramento, access to the American River, Sac State, where I went to school. Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. But the main attractions of Sacramento that you're going to want to see for sure are in the old town, downtown, midtown, east Sac kind of areas. There's also some cool events that come to Sacramento. It's not a big, giant city, but it is the capital, and so it does attract different kinds of annual events from... The California State Fair. The California State Fair. I have met so many people at the California State Fair. They actually have famous music artists that will perform at the California State Fair, too. Yes, and my best friend Josh, the one who does trivia at Limelight, he got to go backstage at Hanson because he had been drinking a little bit and he told the security that his press pushed his way through and then started to take selfies with the <laughs> Hanson brothers <laughs> until they finally realized this guy is not security. That's awesome. And they kicked him out. <laughs> he got the pics though. Mm -hmm, he did. And they look so confused too. <laughs> if you look at the Hanson brothers, they're like, who is this fool? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And the fair usually takes place in August to September. They were planning this year on moving it to July and August, but due to COVID, they didn't actually have it. So I don't know going forward if they are going to keep that trend of July and August, but it is not to be missed. I mean, it is California State Fair. You have the Midway area with the rides. You have the amazing exhibits to see. I definitely do love it out there. And they do have the nightly concerts as we discussed throughout this fair season. And and in those exhibits, they also have photography competitions where you can often, if not every single year, see Jamal and my older sister place. Yes. There you go. Shout out Nejwa. Another big draw of Sacramento. We mentioned earlier that there's two rivers, American and Sacramento. 
People are always on the river, like boating, wakeboarding, fishing, fishing, tubing, swimming across. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I probably should have died tubing one time down the river. <laughs> That's not to discourage anybody from doing it. Definitely do it. I was young and stupid, <laughs> but <laughs> do it. It's fun. There's definitely some rapids areas. I remember they when they first made this law in Sacramento that you can't drink on the river on a holiday. People were pissed. And so... <laughs> To spite them, they organized this massive river float. I think it was the weekend after Labor Day. This thing was like girls gone wild. Just <laughs> Were you the one of the ones that gone wild, Kim? <laughs> I was the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are droves of people launching into the river, floating down, getting wasted. And then there was these like mud islands at the end where people were like girls and guys, mud wrestling, drinking. There was a helicopter that was above that was saying like, you guys need to leave. You need to go. It was really funny, but usually it's not that crazy. Sounds but. like a great time. <laughs> <laughs> but floating down the river is a really fun thing to do, especially if you are there in the summer when it's really hot. So hot. I can just imagine it's a great place to cool down, have some beers when it's not a holiday weekend, apparently. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, there's different things to really do on the river. Like we've said, there's both rivers, American, Sacramento. The Sacramento comes from the north, flows through the Central Valley through Sacramento, and then obviously exits into the Pacific Ocean through San Francisco. The American Shorter River comes from the Sierra Nevadas where they have that gold. So it comes from the east going west. And that is really the river that you want to be on if you want to do some whitewater rafting. So there's more rapids on that. And whereas if you really wanted to fish, the Sacramento one is it. The Sacramento has more beachy areas along the river itself. So that's really more where the barbecue action or beach action is going to be along the river. So depending on what you want to do, that's what river you want want to go to but do check it out i mean the sacramento summers are pretty much spent on the river that's for mm -hmm, sure mm -hmm. not to be a danger ninja but go out have fun but also know that these are not swimming pools these are rivers and there are people who drown every single year don't be a statistic yeah and the places where they usually have parking lots that attract a lot of people they have free life jackets that you can borrow Real quick, speaking of the river, do any of you ladies remember, I forgot what year it was, but I know it was when we were all still living up there, where one of the whales mm -hmm. really came far up into downtown Sac in the river, and they had to help figure out a way to turn it around using like echolocation that. or the clicks or whatever the whales use to orient themselves. And so I think it had a calf with it too, did yes. it not? Yes, yeah, you got, that was a very that? exciting time. It was. So, I mean, if you get lucky... You know, you can catch some serious sea life all the way up <laughs> in Sacramento or on the river. I don't remember that, but I wish I did. Oh, yeah. It was big news. Shoot. Oh, I have another place I can recommend. Swabies on the River is this really cool outdoor venue. They have bands that will play. No one majorly famous, but good vibes. A lot of reggae bands come there. And there's tons of outdoor benches and really good tacos. Highly recommend. Another really good thing to do in Sacramento is actually go to a Sacramento River Cats game. And the River Cats is Sacramento's triple A team. They play in West Sacramento. And what I really like about it is, I mean, it's a very small, intimate stadium. It has views looking at downtown Sacramento. So it's really nice. And what's really cool about it is if you don't want to sit yourself in a chair, the whole outfield is a grassy knoll and lawn. So you can actually bring a blanket, lay it out, and just watch the game sitting on the grass. And it's really, really nice. And even if baseball is not your thing, it's just a fun thing to do in Sacramento just for the views, the atmosphere, and the nightlife. It's pretty affordable and very family friendly too. If you're lucky, you might catch a hot dog from the hot dog cannon. Do you ever remember them shooting those hot dogs <laughs> oh, in the yeah. hot dog cannon? T-shirts and hot dogs. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing to do in Sac is to check out the Memorial Trail. It's a paved multi-use pathway and and it runs from the confluence of the Sacramento River with the American River all the way to Folsom Lake. And it's 32 miles long. It's one of the longest built bike trails in the country. That's super long, 32 miles. And Folsom Lake is a very large recreational lake. It is not natural. It is dammed from the American River. So again, this path does follow the American River all the way to Folsom Lake. So it's really cool even if you want to go for a bike ride, walk, bring your skateboard, whatever you want to do really cool outdoor activity. I don't know if I should say this, but I've never heard the word confluence and now I've heard it twice in this episode, one from Jamal and one from Brittany. You've never heard the words confluence? Please explain the meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. SAT words, I don't know. 
Confluence is really just the junction of two rivers. That's all it really is. Straightforward. Yeah, pretty simple. Well, I mean... You learn something new every day. You really... I don't talk about the confluence of rivers too often. Well, that's what happens when you (laughs) hang out with uh, me from the Travel Squad, Zane. You learn new lingo. Absolutely. You learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing that at the Memorial Trail, there is a bridge called the Guy West Bridge, and it's a scaled down reproduction of the Golden Gate Bridge. And it's made as a suspension bridge so that pedestrians and bikes can go across. That is pretty cool. Have you done that, Kim? Because it's it stretches across to go to Sac State. No, I haven't. Oh, really? <laughs> you should check it out. I will. I'm actually going to Sac soon, so maybe I'll just pop on over. Well, one thing that you might do when you pop on over there, Kim, <laughs> is I know you're a walking tour fiend because the love of your life, <laughs> if I'm not to be mistaken, was met on a walking tour. Why don't you tell us about Sacramento's downtown walking tours? <laughs> I thought you were about to say, why don't you tell us about the love of your life? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you can go back to our Cusco Peru episode to hear about that walking tour. But for Sacramento, you can find a free walking tour and paid walking tours in every city you go to. I swear even the smallest towns will have one. This one is through the app GPS My City. And like I just said, it's in several different cities around the country, but they do have one in Sacramento. Comes with a tour map, you have photos, gives you background information, attractions you should see other than the ones we already mentioned in this episode. And Brittany will love this. You can use it while you're offline. So if you don't have data... Oh my goodness. There you go. (laughs) Especially, you know, for all of the Australians who are listening to us right now, who may be coming to Sacramento. And And traveling abroad. Yes. Mm -hmm. You may not have data. That is a great tip, Kim. Squad tip. Squad tip. My last tip about Sacramento is something that I used to love to do when I lived there. In downtown Sac in Cesar Chavez Park, um, around late spring, early July, for several Fridays in a row, I think maybe it lasts two months or so, they do concerts in the park. And again, they're not super famous artists, but great music, great vibes. They have food trucks that come out. They have beer gardens. And it's just a big, really family friendly. You can bring your own chairs and blankets and stuff. And it's a great Friday evening event totally free for anybody of any age. I highly recommend it. And it's at the perfect time before it gets too, too hot because right towards the end of the season, it's almost unbearable to go. It gets hot in sack. Mm-hmm. It does. Jamal and I used to do summer camp and if it got too hot, we weren't allowed to go outside and they would have indoor activities for us. <laughs> but don't let that discourage you from going in the other seasons. And, you know, the anomalies that Kim was saying, the high hundreds, I mean, that happens, I don't want to say rarely, but it's not like it's every day. It's usually around 100, give or take. But the 114s are just sprinkled in there. They're sprinkled in there. Little outliers. <laughs> yeah. So if you're from Arizona, come on over because it's going to be even Oh, yeah. It's come nothing. on down. Yeah. It's not or Australia. <laughs> Absolutely the Gulf. <laughs> All right. I think that sums it up for Sacramento. Unless any of you ladies had any other final thoughts that you wanted to mention or say? Mm. The only thing I can think of is Oscar award winning uh, actress Brie Larson is from Sacramento. Same with Tom Hanks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Mention that Tom Hanks. And I would just say Sacramento isn't necessarily a high on the list tourist destination for many people, but it does have a lot of cool things to check out. So if you're planning a trip to Tahoe or, well, Tahoe, you may even want to fly into Sacramento and that'd be a good reason to check it out. Or if you're in San Francisco and kind of going anywhere else, it's a good place to stop into, even if you only have a day. It's very close to Yosemite National Park, so you can add this into it. So you may not go just for Sacramento, but it's close enough to so many other cool things that it's definitely worth adding on. And it's 15 miles south of our hometown Woodland, so swing on up and check it out. Episode on that coming soon. Check out Woodland. (laughs) Yeah, I just want to say, you know, Sacramento is a really underrated city. Sometimes, I mean, it is the butt of the joke because everyone thinks San Francisco, Los Angeles, and like, oh, Sacramento, it's the capital. But Sacramento is a really cool city. It does have its own charm, atmosphere, and vibe to it that's really, really cool. It has a very historical relevance to California State as a whole. So it's really a city not to be missed, and you definitely will enjoy it. And one thing that we forgot to mention that I just want to go ahead and say, too, is do check out the Crocker Art Museum. It's a rite of passage when you go and live in the area just as well for school. You take field trips there, but it really is a cool museum. As a matter of fact, it was founded in 1855 and it's the oldest art museum west of the Mississippi. And there's a lot of modern art, but more particularly California art that was painted during the time of the gold rush in the area and the mountains. So it's really, really cool. And we forgot to mention that earlier. So I just wanted to throw that out there. 
But with that being said, Kim, I think it might be your oh. favorite time. Ooh. Is it? Ooh. It's time for questions of the week. Yeah. Ooh. Give me a beat. Coming in hot with questions of the week. Ask us now or forever hold your peace. Send in an email, a DM on the gram. Questions of the week coming at you like. Bam. 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 Very good one today, ladies. Nice little wrap. <laughs> Woo. All right. What do we got? Okay. Our first question. Uh, we actually got this one submitted through our website, so we don't have a name, but thank you to whoever you are. And the question is, what's the best way to get around SAC? Or do I need to rent a car? I would definitively say yes. There is mass transportation in Sacramento. It's not very good like any other American city, really. I hate to say it. Um, so it's not like good mass transportation like in New York. So you will want the car. A lot of things are spread out. I mean, maybe when you're downtown, you can rely on the little light rail that goes through there from one place to the next. But in general, if you're going to get around SAC, you do need a car. And I think that the best thing to do is rent one. Sacramento does have a bus system within its city in my years of living there never used it if you needed to use it you absolutely could and you could figure out and get by it kind of depends what you're doing if you're staying in that downtown midtown kind of east sac area you can get by with walking it's very walkable and they do have uber and lyft and cabs actually so if you're kind of staying in that area and maybe it's just a day or two that you're there you probably don't need to rent a car but if you're trying to go farther distances be there for longer go to the river or take a day trip to Yosemite. Yeah, then obviously you would want a car for that kind of thing. So our next question is from Colin H. And he asks, can you use Sacramento as a hub? Great question, Colin. And we kind of already touched on this. Yeah, I feel like we kind of touched this on this already. Like we said earlier, Sacramento is only about an hour and a half from San Francisco and Lake Tahoe. You can also do a day trip to Yosemite. And it's also nearby Lassen National Park in Northern California that you can do a day trip from there as well. And that's one of my favorite things actually about growing up in Sacramento area, quite honestly, is because it was so close to so many different things. And that's what I really, really liked about it. I mean, truly, you were never more than an hour and a half to two and a half hours, depending on where you're going from something major, something really, really cool to do. So you can absolutely use it as a hub. Sacramento, like Kim said earlier, probably a better airport for you to fly into than the Lake Tahoe Reno airport, uh, you know, probably maybe equivalent, but I guarantee you it's going to be cheaper to fly into Sacramento than it would be into the the Reno Tahoe airport same distance so do check it out that way and absolutely you can use it as a hub and by the way my last shout out about Sacramento is they have a very nice airport Sacramento yes, airport's very very nice like San Diego has nothing on the Sacramento no. airport <laughs> I would agree with that great restaurants it's recently remodeled it has the trolley system just go for the airport honestly <laughs> <laughs> The red bunny coming down the escalators. Yeah, beautiful art installation. You guys might not know what we're talking about, but when you go to SAC, you'll for sure know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the red bunny. All right, I think that about wraps it up, everybody. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's episode. You know how to keep the adventures going with us. Follow us on Instagram, on YouTube, at Travel Squad Podcast. Tag us in your adventures and send me and all of us those questions of the week. And if you found the information in this episode to be useful, or if you thought we were just plain funny, please make sure to share it with a friend that would enjoy it too. Please subscribe, rate and review our podcast, and tune in every Travel Tuesday for new episodes. Stay tuned for next week's episode. We have more amazing adventures and tips in store for you guys. Woo! Woo! Getting pumped! Bye, Bye, Bye everybody. guys! Bye!